none other than Leeds' his own Leeds Rhino, Stevie Ward. Yo. Yo, yo. yo Stevie, yo. welcome on the podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having me on, boys. Yeah, nice to get you on. Yeah. Um, anyone that doesn't know you, they should know you. But if they don't, do you want to give a bit of an intro? Uh, yeah, I'll give you an intro, mate. Um, so, I'm from Morley, so not far from here. Um, so, I'm a Leeds lad. Um, always grew up with rugby, so... Basically, from about six, seven years old, I played amateur, played amateur rugby. My mum and dad weren't into it. Um, my dad played it when I was younger, but they were more into like bikes and that sort of stuff. And so I got into it just by the childminders next door, um, neighbour's son. Started playing with him, and then went down to the local amateur team, Sea and Saints, it was in Morley. Mm-hmm. Um, played a little bit of rugby union after that, but then uh, came back to Leeds and played. Came back to Leeds and played the Chill Chiefs, um, and and I kind of worked up through that um, as as a youngster really until I signed for Leeds on a scholarship at twelve. Yeah. Um, so I've been at Leeds since I was twelve years old. I've already done a, a testimonial. I was trying to like get a testimonial for now, but wow. no, don't work like that. Um, so I've been been at Leeds for quite a while. Um, won some trophies. Um, been a treble winning campaign for Rhinos, played on our 18, youngest player to win a grand final, played at Wembley, um, the Challenge Cup final, and had some fucking awesome, awesome like times, yeah. like believe it's been awesome, um, and that's been the, like, the real journey for, for, for me, and um, I guess you'd say that just, just over two and a half years ago, um, we launched Mentality, which is you know something else that probably alongside rugby has, has, has really been something that, that I've been developing and learning and, and also developing and learning myself um, alongside it. Um, and the nuts and bolts of Mentality is, is I guess it's similar to, to what your guys' ethos is, to, to help everyday male become a more comprehensive version of themselves. Mm-hmm. With the mindset, um, the first, first point of address. And that you know that brings different stuff out of it, but um, yeah, that's my background. Uh, I imagine there'll be more stuff to fall out of it while while we chat. Mm, yeah, definitely. That's a big intro, though. Yeah, big intro. I'm not um, used to doing that, but yeah, talking about yourself, Richard. Like, yeah, you know, exactly. Questioning people. Exactly, yeah, it's yeah. crazy. I think since I was like kind of twelve, so um, my family are Bulls fans. Right. Yeah. Um, so we grew up, I grew up through that whole kind of rivalry time and then mm. just seeing Leeds just take off. So you, like, on the cusp of all that at yeah. such a young age, yeah. what's that, what's it like? Like, is it's, it, it, it mad? It's, um, it, yeah, mate, because I was 18, so I juggled my um, A-levels at the same time as, as when I signed professional. So a normal day for me, um, from right at the start, you know, 16, 17 was I'd go over to Kirkstall, do a gym session like six to half seven, drive over to back to um, Morley, do a full day of school at Woodcote Academy, um, do my A-levels and go back on the evening. Yeah. Um, so that was like working my way to, to try and get to a game, try and, try and make a debut. Yeah. Um, and then all of a sudden I made my debut playing at standoff and I'm 18 years old, 18 years old and playing with like Kevin Sinfield, Jamie Peacock and yeah. Danny Maguire, Rob Burrow and these people that, that like you all watched. Mm. Still still in that kind of dream phase when you're 18, you're like, oh, you know, that's, that's the next big thing. If I can do that, it's, it, the living the dream. I'm 18, I'm picking my A-level results up. Um, and then I think it's about a month, two months later, I'm, I'm playing at Wembley um, in arms with Kevin Sinfield and I'm going, <laughs> wow, is this mad. is this is mad, yeah. That's fucking um, crazy. I remember the nerves, mate, on that day. Never had nerves like it. Yeah. Like I've always been, you know. Like, I've always had a saying that the game never changes. You know, whether you're amateur or, you know, whether you're going professional, you know, you're you're still playing the game. You you know the game. You're the best. Um, but mate, that that day at Wembley, we're going to, to play six in front of eighty thousand people. I remember being dizzy, I was that nervous. Wow. Yeah, and I went into change rooms and went to the toilet for a shit and I'm like, this is not shit. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Like, like pretty, much, pretty much shit. 
<laughs> well, this is next level shit. This yeah. literally. Um, but it was good. It was good, mate. And and it kind of the roller coaster didn't stop from there. It didn't stop from there, mate. And um, there's been many more achievements and low points and all that kind of stuff, which you only learn with experience. You know, I, I never, I never got told that before. You know, I always got, you know, said do your legal levels and, and do this sort of stuff if you get an injury but there's so much more that you can learn to help you operate in the world as a rugby player as a person um, alongside it which which helps which is kind of why I think I've, I've put my tally out there to, to give my spin on it and um, why I might be doing some work with, with schools now as well mm, yeah that's something Neil from King Kobe talked about he was saying that his he didn't really care that much that about what his kid was doing at school anymore because he was mm. like as long as they, they grow up to be a good kind of kind person with like good emotional intelligence mm. and that's all he really that's all he really cared about like, like it, yeah. obviously like there's a there's a benefit to going to school like I'm not gonna sit here and be like yeah just fuck mm. it off but I think like, we can all agree it's a it's, it's a, a, it's a good like route to go like down in the, in the world these days like so to strip it back for yourself then, school days, what were your school days like? Did you study quite easily? Did it all go in quite easily or was it a little bit harder in the yeah. for you? I had to I had to work hard. Like I was naturally good. I'm naturally good at the side of things like history, um, specifically English. Mm -hmm. Like I got English quite well and, and, and could create stuff on, on the English side of things, but maths and science is, is where I lack. Right. Um but I'd have had to work, I would have had to work hard. There was one time where I was I was in the second year of A levels and then um, I went to do my English exam. We sat it early actually, but I were on preseason camp with Rhinos um, in New Cyprus for for a week before the exam and and not done my work properly. You know, I've not been revising, I've been training, I've been like kind of slacking. And I went and sat the the exam and got a U. Um, no way, I've got on you. I don't know if I completely answered the <laughs> question wrong or what, but it kind of was a big kind of sign to me that, that I actually needed to work at it and, 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 and crack on with it. And I ended up being like one mark off an A when I sat it, um, at the later point before the Challenge Cup. So, yeah, it's um, they're coming out hand in hand for me. Like, it, it wasn't like such a natural thing. Mm -hmm. It's so probably something natural there, but you know, I had to. I had so, to you've been quite it. aware of your own performance, and so to say, from quite a young age, in terms of from a rugby side and even from an academic kind of side, you've been quite on top of yourself through that. Yeah, I think so, mate. I'm, I'd like to think of myself as, as um, quite self aware. Mm -hmm. um, I've had practices since, since the last few years, a couple of years really, where I've probably honed that a bit more, but I think. You know that might have been um, something that's helped me along the way as well. I'm still completely oblivious, so I forget stuff. I walk into things and I'll do all this sort of shit. But yeah, I kind of, I kind of, very honest with myself. Yeah, we found that big time on the podcast, haven't you? It's like taking accountability for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so with that, then, how did you come into doing mentality? How did that come about? Like, did you go that's through yeah, something in your life? What yeah. caused? What sparked? So, I, so. We mentioned like the um, the period when I was eighteen, where I was doing the levels and playing and, and having these meet, like meteoric rise really, where to to play these games and play these finals and and win. Um, the year after that, twenty thirteen, um, and the first big injury, I dislocated my shoulder and damaged all the nerves down my my arm. Um, it put me out for nine months. Um, which is like I missed it was like that's like a third of the way through the season so I missed <coughs> a lot a lot of the, a lot of that, well the rest of that year twenty thirteen mm -hmm. and twenty fourteen I came back um, and I was playing from the start of season but I won't play into the potential that I knew I could play or the potential that that other people knew I could play and it fucking killed me it it rattled me it rattled me um, and I was probably you know depressed I was depressed for the second half of that year because it was something that I'd never had to deal with before and you know emotionally I just wasn't there and, and wasn't firing I yeah. wasn't firing on the field and I wasn't firing emotionally either sorry to interrupt you so what is that like then like the support that you get do you get support that like being injured being out for nine months what, what does that look like for 
Yeah, so, so it's... Been out of a job, what, what's the feeling? Of it? I mean, you come, you come in, you come into training and, and I suppose, you know, com- compared to what a fit player would do, you're not really, not really in it, do you know, like, mm-hmm. there's, there's only so much an injured player can do, you can see the physio for, you know, 40 minutes, get some treatment with the physio, then you'll go and do um, some rehab, like um, a gym session, um, with a physio for 40 minutes and then you might do a bike session and depending on whatever injury you've got do some fitness work around that you might be finished by 10am mm, mm. sounds like the dream right but, <laughs> yeah. it does sound like a dream but you're going old boys are going to train on the field by 11 um, so you're missing all that and then you've got, you've got all this time to like sit and wonder and, and kind of not do what, what you want to be doing if you know what I mean yeah. so you kind of as you can imagine like professionals and trying to you know you, you've got to be t- to a degree obsessed with with it mm. um, and I definitely have been and, and when you're not doing it you're like fuck it's, it kills you mm-hmm. um, but you know mental health for me back then wasn't something that was um, it was scary to talk about and, and kind of deal with with in a team scenario environment then um, but because I've had it in my family it was something that I felt like I could approach. Mm-hmm. Um, so I spoke to the team doctor um, and kind of dealt with it from, from there for the rest of that, that year. And um, 2015 were like its own medicine, really, because I was able to use my shoulders again, put size on, um, and start knocking off them wins again. Mm-hmm. Yeah, nice. Mm-hmm. It sounds like a really like lonely period then from going training with the team every day mm-hmm. to then just like, bits and pieces on your own all right stevie it's a living go on rest up yeah like yeah nine I mean, months to that it's, it's interesting because it 2013 i, I kind of got through it it's, that's when i had my injury um and for the rest of that year i was like doing the rehab and it was the first time i'm doing it um but it was 2014 i feel like where i kind of get in and out of team you know and, and, and not playing to the best that i could um and you're kind of looking for the answers and you're looking for the reasons for why. But it probably, like, looking back now, it was just because of my physical development. Like, mm-hmm. I'd been through a lot when I was younger, like, playing, tack- making so many tackles. And um, it probably something that I just had to kind of deal with and, and let myself come into my own. Um, and, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting to think back now. But I do feel like if I'd have known a lot of the tools that I do know now... Um, it wouldn't have been such a, a tough period, if you know what I mean. It, it yeah. would have been something that would have been a, a bit less, a bit, a bit lighter, a bit more more manageable for me. Yeah. yeah, that's it. I think it's that's why your podcast is such a great thing. Like having that. I think we spoke about it, and that's kind of the reason for this podcast is like what would we have benefited from as young kids, mm-hmm. really? Like mm-hmm. there's nothing, yeah. nothing for us to kind of look up to and be like. All right, that's like that's the way to be, like as a as a guy or like mm-hmm. as a person or as someone that's aspiring to do whatever they want to do in life. Yeah. Like, who do you look to? All right, let's look to this guy that's made it. Like, and he's on he Instagram from, yeah. with a million yeah, pounds yeah. and a yeah, and a big yeah, car, yeah. and you're like, well, it's not relatable. Like, yeah, you yeah. want that, but where's the substance? Where's, the, yeah. where's all the substance? Where's the day to day stuff? Mm. Like, mm. and it's that's the thing. So that's that's what sparks mentality or the idea of it, or that's the yeah that was the birth of it in in your um, mind like where did it go from yeah. like dealing with it to to actually putting it into like practice. into practice yeah exactly right so there were there were there were a time where um looking at 2016 now which is after we won the treble and i picked a a, a really big injury up to my knee um two weeks before the grand final in, in league leaders game um, I don't know if anyone mem- you know, anyone listening probably will remember the game where there's that Ryan Hall kind of screaming down the touchline, scoring in the uh, last seconds to to put us through to, to Old Trafford and, and win the game at Huddersfield. Um, that game I'd fully ruptured my knee, like done my ACL, meniscus, cartilage, all this, um, and I was in chain room with a lot going on. Um, but that put me out for 12 months, that one. Oh. It's a big, big injury, so I missed, I missed the, the the grand final where we won it in Old Trafford, and then I missed like a lot of the next year. <coughs> so I remember being on my physio bed, like looking at my knee, going, right, 
there's um, there's something that's got to happen here. Um, I thought I can't go back to that kind of it was like a conscious like decision not to go back to that kind mm. of place, you know. Mm. Um, it was probably the first time where I kind of had some sort of governance on on what I do as an individual, you know, from my values and kind of from my um, version of what makes me tick. Um, so I got to about four months in of my rehab and I was just sick of like finishing at half ten, or like laying on the physio bed looking at like the ceiling. I was like, right, I need, I need to do something. Um, and, and it's funny because you had a lot of Laura Bartlett on the mm. um, on the podcast. I listened to a bit of it. So Laura's like, she's you know just an incredible lady. Um, but it's so funny of how how things work out and whatever you put in your mind as as a sort of importance. Because I went in, up and spoke to Laura um, one day. He was at the Banyan um, opening. They opened the Banyan in the city, city square in Leeds um, and Laura, I seen Laura um, and all Rhino seen me there for the opening and I just went and chatted to her and thought fuck it I'll go talk to her and see what, what, Laura, what, what she's doing here. Yeah. She told me all about House of Coco and, and told me all about um, basically how she managed it, how she did it and I was like that's incredible, that's, that's amazing. Um, and the idea that sprang to mind for me was like doing a male version but dealing with stuff with honestly, dealing with stuff mm. where people can evolve through mental health and um, confront, you know, stuff that they can work through, you know, eventually to get better, really. Because yeah. that's what that's what mindset my mindset were at. Yeah. Um, because I'm in this stage where I want to do something about it because I've been through that in twenty fourteen. Um, so that's kind of where I, I had the idea. I was reading Tim Ferris for our work week at this point. And um, one of the quotes were, um, "What we most fear doing is usually what most what, what we need to do. Mm, what we most yeah. need to do." Um, I'm like, Fuck, what, what, "What am I fearing here? Like, what, what am I fearing at this point?" And, you know, being injured, not doing much, um, and it was like fearing um, talking about mental health, but also doing something a bit different. Mm. Um, so I thought. Why not? I'll do it. Yeah. So I launched Mentality uh, magazine um, online at Magic Weekend 2016. Um, and put it online with some interviews with like people like Jamie Peacock. Um, my article launched it called Dark Side of Sport. Um, and we put it out there and it had everything, travel, music, you know, all this kind of sort of stuff. But it was it was the start of something of the journey really, mm. a bit of a journey really as well. Um and it's it's good. It's start of it was start of something where I'd learn a lot about myself but learn about how I could help other people too. Yeah. Do you know what that's something that gets pushed over with uh, injuries I think. Is that yeah. like if you're a fan of a team or you see a player and oh they're injured. Like I remember my uh, friend from school, uh, Danny, he was always injured, like he used to play for town and, mm. but he was like, always really injury prone, like just the way he was built, I guess. But you always forget about the mental side, like mm. yeah. recovering from an injury. Like you see it as a headline, you just see it as a physical. Yeah, no yeah, one yeah. ever addresses it or thinks but about like, the mental back side. Back in the game, get your mind ready. Like, to get, mm, it's, there's a lot like, to it. Dealing yeah. with the like, do you worry about it? Like when you start playing, even though you've done all the rehab, you worry about it. Like going again. Like do you like you don't trust it? Like, yeah, it's it's a weird. Like, like we said there, like that. That's a lot of mentality to change perceptions. Like fans would be like. Just not you know not, not have no sort of inkling towards what the mental side of getting back from an injury is and, and never mind yeah. what it is going through the season. So that's what mentality was as well. But on the the side of getting back playing, um, I, I don't think it, you know you have to to play rugby to play rugby league in, in, in big games. You've got to get well, for me. I try to get into a zone where I'm completely in the moment. Like I'm not thinking about my knee or my shoulder or anything I'm, I'm a bit kamikaze to be honest at the best of times anyway yeah. so All right. yeah I'm just like that's probably you know yin and yang really kind of thing I'll pick up some injuries because I throw myself in there a bit mm-hmm. um, so, but that's individual to me and, and I'm sure there's many other athletes where 
they need to get their head around it and, and, and usually after two or three games you kind of forget about it anyway yeah all right mm. yeah it makes a lot of sense because that's what i was going to ask like what were the when you were kind of soul searching or, or like doing that sort of kind of reflecting like what were the anxieties that were cropping up like was it was it the the worry of worrying about the injury like going back into that mm. that spiral is that what it was like it was just like it was just it, it's like a turbulent it was like a turbulent few years for me and, and this is you know that get that day of the game it was like the day I'd um, we buried my nana as well. Oh shit, really? So I buried my nana that morning and like, right, I'm going to have a fucking awesome game this tonight. I'm going to kill it. Like, mm. scored, scored within about five minutes. Mm. And we had a really good first half and we were like, we're going to win it, you know, we're going to win. And then took a turn, we'll do it, you know, I'd done my knee, I'm like, oh my mm. God. And um, it was just that moment there, I was just like looking at my knee. Um, I think like, you, you, turn, you turn the pressure up that far on the on you know on the, on the pressure cooker or, or however you want to kind of, kind of think of it, and it's just like it's just like it just like clicks. And you just got to you, you, you kind of get put through to this this point where you've got to think about or address a lot of things um, for how you navigate or for for what could work best for you. And and that's what I think that moment kind of was for me when I was looking at my knee um, and just thinking about you know what what's what's kind of next, what's the next stage. For, for where I go. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Is that the point where you, you kind of drew, like, you, you say to yourself, right, my knee's gone. You're looking at it and you're like, there's two ways you go from there. That's either your bottom or, and you bounce back and you, and you get back into kind of a, a positive yeah. mindset or you go into, you, or you, you, that's not the bottom. That's the trigger to go, like, even mm, further. Yeah, like, because sure. I think that's, do you know, like, it sounds more trivial, but like a diet, like, or someone fucks off a diet and has a milestone and, Ten minutes later, they're eating a fucking piece like they just mm. it snowballs. Compound, it's like yeah, 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 drawing yeah. that line, like yeah, that for is sure. the important part. I know I don't want to like yeah. bog it down to something so trivial. It sounds a bit rude. No, no, it's not. It no, no, it's not. It's yeah. um, you're right, mate. It's uh, and I've had to, I've had, I've had to do a few, few of those decisions, mate. I um, I, like last twenty seventeen, um, I dislocated my shoulder the week before um, the grand final. And um, that went in semi final, and I'm like, I'm gonna miss another one. So you, you kind of think of 2015, where I've done my knee, like no chance of playing. I dislocate my shoulder, 2017 semi final, and I'm like, I've done it again here. Yeah. It, will, it will like, it will like, wow, how can this happen? But in that instance, I decided I was gonna play, and, and that everything that had happened in that week leading up to the grand final would, would allow me to play. Um, and that's like that is like literally the power of your mind. Honestly, mm -hmm. it's like it was a weird. It was a weird week that because it was like it was like all or nothing. Do you know what I mean? It was. I, I've never been in a position where it's like all or nothing. Like some games you play, might I might get a bit more hurt or or whatever. It's like well, I need a knock on the shoulder anyway. I was gonna be missing a few months after the, after the final. So everything that came into to that space was like. Well, I didn't even need to negotiate with it or think around it. It's like, well, I'm playing, um, and the worst thing that could happen is I've tried and I can't make it. So everything were like, everything were on me. Mm. Um, managed to obviously get 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 on the pitch and, and we managed to win. So that one incredible time as well. Yeah. Mm. So you know, with like introducing mentality to the team, then how and like the boys and, and the guys, how, how how was that transition? I've played professional basketball uh, when I was younger, like three years of my life, and I lived in a house with the players, and it was like consistent when you were your boys. It, yeah. I don't know, yeah, you are a team, but there's also a bit of that, your own personal ego, and, and yeah. there's a band with it. Was it quite hard to like yeah. open up and, and be yeah, it's really, kind of real about that? Really, really good question, that, mate. Because um, that, you know, even on team environments is uh, it's quite a big thing because. Um, there's one, there's one scenario where I launched it, I launched that little thing for Magic Weekend, and I was fucking like so nervous, like, this is like a big thing. Mm. You know, not to talk about mental health, but coming out and doing something like this to, you know, to kind of change perceptions. And, and I say it's not really been done, really, like, no. to, to exactly. putting yourself out there like that. There's not many mm -hmm. people that, that, that go out there and do it. No way. Like, yeah. Exactly. Um, 
and he's such a manly sport as well. Like yeah. it's like the pinnacle of, like you know, like kind of brutality. Sometimes Contact would be like yeah. contest yeah. sport. It's, it's yeah. way up there, so yeah. it's kind of ticking every box for it to be like a mm. not a hard sell, but like yeah, like justifiably yeah. fucking it. nervous. Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a scenario in my I was going up to Newcastle as well to be there for Magic Weekend when it launched and stuff. Um, I got on and nothing was different. There was a bit of banter and you know there's like no change. We're like well, and because people know what it's like, you know what I mean. It's not. It, some people think it'll only be them that has you know suffered with with a mental struggle, but you know it was it was it was incredible because. No one really had any anything to say about it being bad or or, or kind of anything against it, and then you know obviously the dynamic changes, the culture's changing um, in team environments now. People talk about mental health, um, people talk openly about it, um, and it's you know it's um, it's a weird transition I guess over the two and a half years because you know going out twenty fourteen I want the dreams of it, mm. you know I want the I'm gonna go speak to this, or I'm gonna you know, bring it out in the open. But now it's out in the open. Um, people actually look at it if it's like just the same as physical health, and um, which it is. That's, a, it that's is, the crazy yeah, thing, yeah. isn't it? Mental health is just the same as physical yeah, health. Like yeah, both exactly. as equal as each other. Exactly. So why do we neglect one? Mm, you got to look yeah. after your head, just like you got to look after your body, mate. It's that's 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 what it is. But um, there's obviously been banter and that about putting a magazine out and all this crazy stuff on yeah. hundred but it's like well that it's solidarity isn't it you know that's that's what it is and as you know like it's it's some it's, it's how some people show that they care about you and um uh, you know and, and you still want there. people to give you shit to me, like banter and stuff exactly like, so what yeah, it's yeah. changed do you yeah, exactly yeah I don't, yeah i don't want to walk in and because i've put a magazine out no one say oh you know what I mean? yeah <laughs> Ah, so you said the guys and they they've receptive quite well to it and bought into the Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um What about the fans? How well, yeah, what kind of responses have you had from the fans? There's um no, there's this there's some there's some people where I've had messages where it's like I read it and it's it's hard to comprehend because you know, there's there's people messaging saying that it's it's changed your life and you know there's there's there was a lady came up to me just recently about two about two or three weeks ago, um, and she said her son had been suffering big time, mm. um, but I helped putting putting the stuff out on telly. I helped him not, you know, take a really really bad you know decision. And I'm like, you know, this is like it's it's heavy stuff, mm -hmm. but it's it's big stuff and important stuff, and um, you know, for people to come and say that to you, like, you, you know, you. It's it's like a, it's like a compelling reason to carry on, you know. Mm, absolutely. Yeah, do you know what that's big? Yeah, it's mm. yeah, it's fucking crazy. I think it's to, for someone to use a platform like you have. It's just it's like it, it's a bit cringy, but it sounds like it is. It is inspiring. Like yeah. it is a inspirational thing. Like to take that leap. I think when someone can see someone do that, then it like because it's just amplified on you. Like oh, grand final winner, mm. like uh, Lee Drino. People look at that. It's like, this guy can be open yeah, about yeah. struggles and shit like that. I can, you know, talk to my, you know, my friends about like X, Y, and Z. Yeah, you know for I mean? sure. And it's it's counterintuitive. Like it's been counterintuitive for for males for years and years. But we're getting to a stage now where I think we need to evolve through it and to be vulnerable. You know, you don't think being vulnerable is going to help, but it does help. And it's not just talking and and you know and going and talking to people about it but it's, it's like looking at yourself and reflecting and um, being honest with yourself for, for what you want you know there's we did a retreat and, and there's people that came on the retreat that were like living with anxiety because they were doing stuff they didn't want to do they mm. had that space that space away from everyday life that where that momentum just continues and continues um, but they had the space to kind of look at what they were doing in the, as a job and realise that they didn't want to do it. The mm. values didn't match it. Um, and and what they were doing as, as for their for their like profession, their livelihood, um, didn't work with them. So some people changed what degrees they were doing at uni, some people changed the jobs. Um, so it's like it's it's just it's just 
I guess it's just making people think. It's just making people stop and think. Yeah. Um, and look for the the way to better navigate the world. Yeah, and look out for your friends. I think as well. Like Julian mentioned, Headspace to me. Like, mm-hmm. you, like how long ago is that? Like two years. Yeah, so wow. Well, 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 Headspace was like, yeah. what the fuck is that? And then yeah. you try it, and then we were talking, weren't we? Like, oh yeah, it's fucking weird. Like, you, like, you, like, feel not really good afterwards. And was like, <laughs> you don't know why. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this, what is this and, and you just start like I think people need just me need to be more open. And then like you talk to people, and they're like, oh yeah, I use Headspace, and like, man, this I is honestly becoming like. Coming, like a, it is, it's becoming like a thing, like, it's just people trip, like, like you'd say to someone to go to do some bench press or like a different sort of bench press or different technique or whatever. Mm. Like, like I said, like, have you tried Headspace out? And it, that's what it's becoming, like, people start to talk more and more about it. And I remember the first time I meditated, I'm like, wow, mm. this is class. I feel <laughs> class. And I f- remember the first time I did a 30 minute one, I'm like, why do I not do meditate 30 minutes every day? Yeah. I feel fucking incredible. Yeah. But it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where... Until you learn those things you don't know, do you? Don't exactly, know yeah. exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, so it's, it's fun, mate. It's fun finding out all this different stuff that works, you know, and different ways to, to manage yourself and, and manage what's going on around you. It's good. Yeah. Well, what, what kind of things have you put in place then? Headspace, what are we like to... I guess to, to switch off from from work. Yeah, so like that, just getting away from that momentum helps, mate. You know, that's why people take holidays because they have a break f- away from from what they do. Um, float tanks. Have you tried float tanks? No, no. Oh, I've got always three three to deprivation. Yeah, yeah. Joe Rogan talk quite a lot. Yeah, they're good, mate. They're good. Um, you should give it a whirl. Like, I must have been about you know after over ten times, um, and I reckon about six or seven have been like really beneficial. Yeah. It's just it's just like takes you away from it and you're like obviously complete darkness. It's like they say it's like the closest thing to being back in the womb. Yeah. Yeah, like no sound because you've got earplugs in and, and the, the skin um, the water skin temperature as well. Um and you go into this kind of weird phase, like I don't know, it's like halfway between like asleep but you're not asleep and you're like kind of dreaming and you're like, What is going on here? <laughs> yeah. But as soon as you get out, mate, you feel like you feel miles, miles better. Or as if it's been like meditation on like hyperdrive or something like that um so that's some of the, the that i use every now and then um i also sometimes it's another i think it's another version but it's i sometimes um have a day in the week or a day in the month where i'll get in the car and i won't know where i'm going mm-hmm. i'll just like get in the car and i'll just i'll just head somewhere and you know as if i'm going to go right left straight on for 10 miles and go right left again end up somewhere and and, and kind of spend half the day you know nearly a day just doing something random yeah, yeah, that's that's sick. Like that. yeah. because you don't have, like you know when you you set up like as if you're going to go somewhere and you've got all these expectations you've got all like the kind of ideas of what it's going to be like <laughs> um how long it's going to take to get there but you, you're proper in the moment, mate, when you do it because you don't know where the fuck you're going. You don't know what it's going to be like. Um, and that's just another version for me, really, which which I do when, when stuff gets money, you know, when stuff gets um, stressful. So, yeah, that's that's another thing that, that I found interesting. Yeah, that's pretty cool, man. I've never heard anyone say that before. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, <laughs> that's cool. What's the weirdest it's place you've ever ended up? <laughs> well, I ended up going to, um, driving to, like, Derbyshire, that sounds good. Like, that sounds good. I'm right, down there. See what's down there. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I headed down there, and it's like further south. And um, I remember getting there, and like, it said signs for Derbyshire. And I'm like, oh, where's this here? Like, because I was on the horizon, they were like, I'm trying to think of the name of them. You know, like, a, it's not here, but it's like, you're on Simpsons, where there's like a nuclear power plant. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, one of them going, where the fuck am I going here? <laughs> Like, what is this I'm doing? Where am I heading? Um, but then I, I pulled off going to Derbyshire and I knew like some sign for like Elveston Castle. I thought, oh, the castle, that's, that's pretty cool. Eh? <laughs> check See that out. Is. Yeah, check that out. <laughs> anyway, I went in and, and pulled in there um, and it was classed it. it. Like, sun came out as soon as I got away from the power plant and um, just was like literally went and, and, and walked through like these woods and, and, and up to this castle. like proper like you wouldn't have even thought about it if, if you're not doing this mm. this mad that mad day or whatever you're going to do um but your class 
do have like these gardens that you see in Alice in Wonderland and that. I'm like, this is crazy. Mm. This is crazy. I did not know that I'd end up here. Yeah. And then because you don't know what you're going to do, you don't know how long you're going to be there, you're just fully in it and you're just experiencing it. So it'll go. Yeah, like totally like intrigued by everything around exactly. you. And stuff like that. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> because you, you've not planned it, you, you don't have an idea f- for what it's going to be like. Um, so, yeah, so that was pretty cool. Um, but another thing that, that I'd stress, which is important for people, is um, to know your values as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when it does get tough, or when, when, it, when you're in a stressful, stressful situation, you can kind of link your, your behaviours to, to your values. Um, it's almost like a fake it till you make it kind of thing. You know, when you're not feeling great and you don't feel like there's, there's, there's anything that will make you feel better in, in that situation, um, behave to, to what your values are. So f- for me, I know that I'm a student, so I want to learn stuff all the time. Um, I know that I'm a bit of a leader and, I'm, and in that I'm always striving. So I'm like always striving to like achieve and to, to learn stuff, to get better, to do all this. Um, and, and kind of in that, in, in different thing, in different things to what you know, you know, I, I know I'm pretty, pretty selfless as, as, a, as an individual. What is it that you can go do where it's going to tick those boxes for you, mm. you know, make you tick again? Yeah. Um, so for an instance, um, we went down to London, we went to the Global Mental Health Summit, um, when is it now? It's about five weeks ago five, six weeks ago. Um, but we did a video with these guys that are doing the Strong Not Silent campaign down there. I don't know if you've seen it. It's my managing. But we did like a spontaneous like vlog type video. Um, people will be able to find it on mentalitymagazine.com. Um, trained with them. So obviously I'm used to training. Um, and having camaraderie and, and meeting new guys and making new connections. And it worked, mate. I had like the best three, four days ever. Do you know And it's like? Just try and think up of, of that version of or that version of behaviours that, that links to you as, as, as an individual and you'll you almost find yourself in that, that cycle that you want to be in. Yeah. Do you think that's the problem? Do you think that's where a lot of stuff stems from is um, people not really understanding themselves, like who they who they are? I think that's yeah, I think that may be a really, really big issue, mate. Um, and it takes time, you know, no one's going to know it. No one's going to know it until they have to know it or, or look look at it. But, you know, that level of understanding and, and kind of, um, I guess it, I guess it's um, introspection really. Um, it helps you because, you know, for, for me, knowing my values, it helps because I know whether I like it or not, that thing's going to work to put me in that, that kind of groove and that kind of mindset where I want to be in. Um, I could go, could go really deep on this, but um, there's there's a certain unease that I think people have when they're, they're doing stuff and they, they don't want to do it, and um, they kind of not 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 in sync with it, if that makes sense, and, and that's why they they make the wrong decisions and you know choose to to go down the route of drinking and don't make that the opportunity to stop and and, and look at themselves to to take that next step for, for what would work for them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, think, I guess that's the hardest part because it's kind of what I kind of think Neil alluded to it in the, in the podcast when he was saying that he read Jordan Peterson's like 12 rules for life yeah, and, yeah. He, and, he, and it kind of just fucking assassinated like we 98% was, yeah. of who he Wrong. thought he was and he was like you're full of shit Neil like he, I think he literally yeah, that's like yeah. a direct quote from the podcast and it's like you were like, there's five percent of me left, but mm. at least five percent of me is like the the real yeah, version yeah. that he wants to be, that he mm, that he knows deep down he, he should strive to be. In in what way? In what way? Um, the sort of stuff that John Peterson's like alluded to is that kind of where he's thought, oh, this is the wrong belief, or is this is something that I'm holding myself to. I think so. I think it was just like he was saying, like part of him was like maybe like a little bit of bullshit. Bit of mm. ego, mm. like, lies, he lies he tells uh, to himself. That's right, yeah, yeah. Like, persona that he was carrying across, and yeah. he said he had this girlfriend that basically told him straight, hey, you're not this guy who you think you are. Mm. And then down the road, a few years later, he, he actually realised that. Yeah. 
That's that was it. kind of like the turning point in his life. Mm. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And he, said, and he said it just like hit him like a fucking bus. And he was like, oh, like, how does she know me yeah. better than I do? And he said it just like, yeah, it was like one of them moments yeah, yeah. where like, what the oh, fuck? Like she just saw it instantly. Because <laughs> yeah. he, he's not out yet, is it? That, that book has not released yet. That's it. Like, we did a little part two of him. But right. yeah, it was, yeah, it was crazy to think because I think sometimes like you kill, you'll kind of be flexible to the people you're around mm. and then you'll kind of leave that situation and then you're like, I only did that to please them, yeah. not myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, like, and that's, like, that's normal for people, isn't it? It's normal. Yeah, of course. Um, but yeah, that's um, that's a strong point. That's a strong point. That's a strong read. That if he's uh, if he's thought that, like, fuck. Yeah. That eight percent gone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's tough when you were saying. Yeah, just I, I can try to be one percent better. You know, mm. every year. This that that's what you know. And, I, and that, when I go on Instagram, it's like it's a weird, weird thing with Instagram, mate. Because people, <laughs> it's a weird yeah. thing. Because people are living by their image, like. For yeah. me, that's like a, a, a physical kind of metaphor for, for what people are living by their image, like what they want to put across, how they see themselves, what matches with their image, you know, so whether they're looking at your know, females or they're looking for a partner or a bird or whatever, and that's that, that matches with, with what I, what my yeah. image is, and it's, and, and that's what people are learning, you know, that's what this generation, you know, is, is learning to do now. Um, so step back from it and, and kind of, as, as we said, like know yourself and know what works for you. Um, because it's, uh, yeah, it's a fucking weird thing is that Instagram, mate. Yeah, big time. Yeah. yeah it's so we've, we've talked about it loads about how it's like a, it's just kind of, what was you saying about the social media thing? Like social media is like a, well, the it's like a bit of a, mm. it's like a bit of a test on like society, it's like a fucked up science experiment like let's give yeah. them social media and just see what <laughs> yeah, happens could be, could but then be. now like it, for a long time it was a big ass fucking negative like and, and it still is it still has that negative connotation of like all right people only put their, their best life on there whatever yeah, yeah, yeah. but then the flip side to it is things that you're doing like that's that's the, that's the positive yeah, impact of yeah, social yeah. media and like long term if people open up and people are genuine well, and people buy into that yeah then that's gonna like it, it'll kind of be like a, a self cure. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like social, it was a, it was a, it was a cause, but then if sure people, exactly. it just depends how we like as a society we want to yeah. like, use it. Yeah. Have you listened to um, J Cole's like latest album, KOD? Yeah, I have. Yeah. yeah. Well, like he touches on it all, mate. Like the way that people, are, well, we you could list it and list it like the the amount of stuff that he goes through, but. He's really is talking about the generation now, uh, generation today, what they choose to do because of you know where they've been pushed to and how they've not even you know stopped to to think and kind of understand the mind and and you know if, yeah it's um, there's people like him that you, you come across on Instagram or you come across through music and you think that's fucking.